it is section 2.2 fixed point iteration the fixed point iteration looks simple however it is quite useful and popular many uh, iterative algorithms can be expressed as uh, fixed point iterations let's begin with uh, uh, the definition of fixed point a number p is a fixed point for g if g of p is p. So a fixed point of g is a point that remains unaltered under the action of g. Let's see this example. Find the fixed points of g of x equals x squared minus 2. We define here g of x and g of p equal p can be expressed in this way. We solve the equation. Now we get 2n minus 1. So 2n minus 1 are fixed points of g of x. Let's see this figure. Uh, here and this uh, solid curve is y equal g of x. Uh, this uh, dashed line is for y equal x. And here, these are intersections, and minus 1 and 2 are the fixed points. Here at minus 1, the value becomes minus 1. At 2, also the value becomes 2. So they are not changed under the action of G. Okay. Uh, okay, here. Now we start with a, a root finding problem F of P equals zero. For a root finding problem, we define G of X. That's x minus h of x times f of x for some h of x. Now, g of p is same as p minus h of p and f of p. Now, f of p is 0 so that here we can get p. So, g of p equal p. The root of this problem is a fixed point of g of x. That means that a root finding problem can be easily transformed to a fixed point problem. That's the reason here the fixed point iteration is quite popular and useful. The existence and uniqueness of fixed points. And we assume here G is continuous. That is uh, uh, first condition. And secondly, G of X is again in uh, the interval A and B. Okay, that means that range of G is in the interval. If we look at the graph of G, then uh, G is defined A to B, but now the image of G is uh, inside uh, this interval, so that eventually graph of G must be here inside this square. Right? Then uh, G has at least one fixed point. It must be pictorially quite um, um, easy to understand here left end point value of G and right end point value. Now G is continuous so that N cannot go outside of this square and connect to uh, these two points. Then there is at least one point such that it meets this diagonal uh, uh, line. So that that must be uh, fixed point. So uh, existence is guaranteed when 
these two conditions are satisfied. In addition, if G is differentiable and there exists a parted number K, uh, strictly less than one, uh, such that the yeah, derivative of magnitude is bounded by K, then uh, there is a unique fixed point. It means that the uh, fixed point is unique. Okay. And that third condition, okay, is uh, derivative magnitude is strictly less than one. Uh, that means that it starts from here, and once uh, after passing this diagonal line, and now derivative is strictly less than one, so that it cannot come up, come up rapidly to pass one more time. So it's uh, strictly less than one, so that now that line has slope one, so that it cannot uh, come up in this way. So here, uh, with this one, now the existence is guaranteed along with these two conditions. Now, along with that, now here, the fixed point must be unique. Okay. Show that uh, g of x, given in this way, has a unique fixed point on minus 1 to 1. Firstly, we have to see g is continuous. But it is continuous quite easily. We can see that this is polynomial. And secondly, uh, the range, you have to check range, g of x. Okay, let's see uh, the graph of g of x. Okay, now we'll make a, a vertical line as good as possible. Okay, now when x equals 0, it has a minimum uh, minus 2 over 3, 3, so that it is given in this way. Okay, now that is a minus a square root of 2, and that is square root of 2, and that is a minus 2 over 3. And the interval is here minus 1 to 1. So that the range is uh, inside here minus 1 to 1. Right? Quite easily you can see that. Now thirdly, here the derivative magnitude must be strictly less than 1. Here g prime of x equals same as 2x over 3. Now maximum uh, and x is in here minus 1 to 1 and g prime x uh, that okay that must be when x equals 1 the value is 2 over 3. So that is a state less than 1. Right? So that the three conditions are satisfied and so that it has unique fixed point. Uh, practically, if you uh, uh, make a, a diagonal line, 45 degree line, y equal x, then it has uh, one intersection. That value is now the unique fixed point. Right? Fixed point iteration. We define a fixed point iteration in this way. Uh, it is an iterative procedure of the form for given initial value p0. Uh, here we evaluate to get new one, and new one will be used again to get new one, and so on. That is fixed point iteration. We assume here. Uh, the sequence generated by this fixed point iteration converges to P. Then, here, uh, P call uh, limit as n approaches infinity and P sub n. But P sub n is G over P sub n minus 1. 
Now, because G is continuous, we can apply limit first, uh, limit and continuous function commute. So here we put here limit inside of the parenthesis, then limit of Pn minus 1 as P. That means that uh, the sequence generated by uh, fixed point duration, if the sequence converges to P, then P is a fixed point of G. Okay. Okay, here the equation that is a root finding problem, root finding formulation, f of x equals zero. Okay, let's say this left hand side is f of x. That is um, uh, f of x. Now, has unique root in the interval 1 and 2. There are many ways to transform the equation to a fixed point form x called g of x. Like we can make it uh, uh, yeah, many of them, but we'll see here only six of them. Here, x equal x minus f of x. Uh, that is a form, and now we start with equal zero, and then uh, multiply minus, and here add both sides x, then we reach at that. So that this can be easily transformed this one. Now that portion is defined to be g sub 1. Now for given equation, first we uh, divide it uh, by x and then we are moving here uh, these two terms to the other side and divide by 4. Then x is same as that term. This is called now g sub 2. So the, these are uh, fixed point uh, formulation x equal uh, g of x, so that it is a, a, a fixed point formulation. Now from here, okay, we move these two terms to the right side and take the square root. Then x becomes this one. This portion is now g sub three. Okay, that one can be rewritten in this way and divide by 4 and take a square root. Then we can reach at that. x call this one. So this is g sub 4. And now, first we factor out x squared for the first two terms. And here, move this one to the right side and divide by x plus 4 and take square root. Then x call this one, and that is now g sub 5. Okay, the final one, the sixth one, is a special uh, form. Now here, uh, that is f of x. Rather than this one, we uh, uh, put here um, 3x squared plus 8x. This um, denominator is not chosen arbitrarily. In fact, that one is a derivative of uh, f of x. So top is now f of x. Now bottom is f prime x. So we choose this special one. And that is uh, uh, the final one here. So we have six formulations for one given zero-point problem we transformed it into six different fixed point formulations. Now let's see if these formulations are um, here uh, meaningful when you try to do fixed point iteration as in this one. For initial value, you evaluate, and the output is again used to and again use the to get u1. So let's see if these formulations are uh, really uh, meaningful.
Okay, here we also uh, check the maximum of derivative magnitude. For this problem, the solution um, is now real uh, solution is here given in this way. I wrote down here um, some digits, uh, but anyway, this is uh, uh, the true real root. Okay. Okay. For first uh, fixed point of formulation, G1 is defined in this way x minus f of x. Now, for that one here, derivative of g and absolute value and take a maximum is 27. And here, when uh, we uh, consider uniqueness of the fixed point uh, here, the, that derivative must be strictly less than 1. Now the value is 27. For this g, we uh, apply the fixed point situation, start with 1.5, um, it's uh, near around 1.3, and 1.5, and tolerance 10 to minus 3, and output is sequence. As you can see over there, after 1, 2, 3, 4, now 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, after 10 iteration, the value becomes 4 times 10 to the uh, 5,840, uh, so that it's blowing up, it's rapidly blowing up for g sub 1. So it is a not meaningful uh, transformation. Okay, for g sub 2, we defined and we check again maximum of derivative of magnitude, which is 3, and along with this one also is blowing up. You can see it quite easily. For g sub 3, now, okay, the maximum of derivative of magnitude is infinity. And after one iteration, the program stopped. The reason is that along with this value, the P1, now inside this radical, the value is negative. So that uh, now uh, it becomes complex value, though, and computer doesn't know what to do, so that it stopped. Now, G sub 4, we defined it, again, uh, maximum value. Okay, now here, uh, derivative magnitude is larger than 1, but uh, for this case, it is convergent. And sometimes, uh, although the um, derivative magnitude is larger than 1, it may converge. However, once it's less than 1, then uh, it is guaranteed. G sub 5, okay, here again we uh, check the maximum of derivative magnitude, which is 0 0.14. Okay, that is way less than 1, and as you can see over there, it is convergent quite uh, nicely. 1, 2, 3, 4. After 4 iteration, the tolerance is satisfied and stopped. And for the final one, I said that there is a special one, x minus f of x over f prime x. For that one, now here, uh, we don't use absolute sign. The reason is for this function, the absolute function is not working so that we make a derivative and try to find the maximum. And for the derivative, now take a uh, here negative and try to get a maximum. So that eventually the maximum of derivative magnitude must be maximum with these two values. Now, yes, uh, strictly less than one. So practically, the fixed point iteration 
is converging very uh, nicely. After filtration, uh, it is convergent, satisfying the tolerance. Okay. Uh, fixed point theorem. This theorem is the major theorem for fixed point iteration. G must be continuous, same condition as earlier. That is first condition, and then um, range of G is in um, AB, so that graph of G is in the square. And here, there is a positive constant k, which is strictly less than 1, and then uh, derivative magnitude is bounded by k. Along with this third condition, the fixed point iteration converges to the unique fixed points. Okay, here we have proof, and from earlier theorem, that existence and uniqueness of the fixed point is guaranteed. Now here, now, okay, uh, because the g of x, the range is between a and b, and that means that pn is always, okay, pn minus 1 is inside of this interval, and ranges again inside of the interval, so that Pn must be also inside of the interval. And so here, by using Minbier theorem, we can reach at this one. P minus Pn is same as, now, okay, P is G of P, is the fixed point, unique fixed point, so that P is same as G of P, Pn is same as G of P n minus 1, now, for this G, we can use uh, Minvier theorem, and that is G prime at some point, and P minus P and minus 1. Now, we know that G prime is assumed to be uh, strictly less than 1, in fact, bounded by K, so that that is bounded by K, and P and minus 1. So, in uh, this is error in m minus 1 stage, and this is error on n stage. So that in after one iteration, error is shrinking uh, uh, by this factor. So it is a, a linear convergence. Okay. If we apply recursively, then now this one is bounded by this one. And so that eventually, now p minus p n is bounded by k to the n and p minus p zero, and power k is less than one, so that is converging to zero, so that now that is converging to zero, right? Okay. So um, uh, that is the proof. Here we have remark. The fixed point theorem deserves some remarks. From 2.15, that one, here we can see that p minus pn is k to the n and maximum of, uh, okay. Now the reason we are considering this one is that uh, p is, um, not known, so that this is our choice, but this one is a theoretical value, and we don't know uh, the exact value of that. So that rather than p minus p0, okay, now the interval is given from a to b, and uh, p must be somehow, and uh, P0 must be some here. So that P minus P0, that one is now less than or equal to these two. If we are thinking now that one, and also, okay, P0, okay, rather than this one, we try to get here 
uh, this distance and now that distance. If we are taking maximum here, then the distance between P and P0 is bounded by this maximum. So that because we don't know this value exactly what it is, just a theoretical value, and we try to use that. Okay. Okay. And also for M and N, M is larger than N, if we uh, consider PM minus PN, then uh, that is the same as subtraction of that one, addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction, addition, and then we separate out for, uh, for each of two, so that over there, then uh, by using the argument using uh, Binbier theorem here, we can reach out uh, this inequality. Here, that is k m minus one power, and here now p one minus p zero, and that is k to the m minus two p one minus p zero, and so on. So p one minus p zero and k n k to the n is common, and the remainder part can be uh, here. Uh, added like that, so that here p minus p n, which is same as the limit, just the m approaches infinity, then that becomes p. Now, um, so that for this one, we take m goes to infinity, then k n, uh, p1 minus p0, this term, and then now, k to the i uh, summation, an infinite summation. So that is a geometric sequence, and start from 1, and ratio is k. So uh, that is same as 1 over 1 minus k. So this whole value is same as 1 over 1 minus k. Uh, along with that, we can reach uh, this term. So here, we summarize p minus p n is bounded by k to the n over 1 minus k and p1 minus p0. Again, we are trying to get this inequality because here that term is a theoretical value. Okay. Now, um, the fixed point theorem holds for any contractible mapping G. Okay, here in definition, contractible mapping is a function satisfying uh, uh, this one. For any choice of uh, two point X and Y, the image, the difference is bounded by now K, which is a strict relation one, and now the point difference. That is uh, contractive mapping. Once it is differentiable, then by divide by over there, take a limit so that eventually derivative is bounded by k. Okay. So uh, that is uh, for, even though it is not differentiable, you can use a uh, fixed point iteration and once uh, it is contractive mapping. Okay, here, let's see this um, practical issue. In practice, P is unknown. Now we consider uh, here, Pn plus 1 minus Pn. That is here, in the beginning we uh, subtract P and add P and we separate the terms into these two parts, then this side is larger than or equal to this subtraction. Now, by using, again, mean value theorem, the argument, this can be written in this way, so that the same as 1 minus k, pn minus p. Okay, so here, 
we have now and 1 minus k and we divide uh, the inequality with 1 minus k then this term is smaller or equal to uh, 1 over 1 minus k and this term over there and now um, here rather than pn plus 1 pn we uh, try to use uh, pn and pn minus 1 and along with the uh, one more k here so that this one and the error is bounded by uh, uh, this one now this uh, magnitude is just the distance between consecutive iterates. So once it is small enough, then error is small enough. And so here, this one can be used for stopping. So iteration can stop when the, the consecutive iterates are near each other. Okay, yes, close enough, then you can stop the iteration. Okay. But in practice, a problem is given uh, uh, in this way. Just, um, uh, just the equation is given, then uh, if you want to find the solution and by using fixed point iteration, and first you have to decide the interval, and then um, you can estimate number of iterations necessary to obtain an accuracy up to some mm, tolerance. You can do that. But here, in order to uh, 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 determine the interval, you may try to use um, uh, some graphic tool. For that one, here, y collects. The graph is this one, and y equal g of x is now given in this way. So um, it's quite simple. And if you are choosing from uh, 0 to 1, a is 0, b is 1, then the graph is inside this rectangle and looks like the slope is strictly less than 1. And for any starting point, you can solve this one by saying, uh, fixed point iteration. Now, for this problem, okay, here, uh, now y equal x and y equal g of x here. If you try to choose the interval from uh, here to there, then around there, maybe the slope is larger than one. Of course, you can check the slope, magnitude of slope, by taking derivative. And however, any apparently it looks like a larger than one. So that you may try to choose interval um, from here. And then now to make um, the range inside the also the square, you may choose uh, upper bound a little bit far away. But anyway, uh, from here and somehow, then uh, it looks um, the slope is now uh, bounded by one, strictly less than one. So the, mm, after choosing your interval, now you can um, uh, estimate the k and by using this uh, error analysis, Mm, here, mm, over there, yeah, like that, and or uh, either this one or that one uh, by using this one by putting that is uh, uh, bounded by epsilon the tolerance, and you can get n, right? Okay, so you can do it yourself. Yeah. Okay, prove that. In the sequence xn defined recursively as follows as convergent. x0 is given minus 15, and now that is a fixed point iteration. xn plus 1 
is 30 minus uh, one half uh, absolute value of xn. So the corresponding g, g of x must be 30 minus half x. Right? Okay. Now we know that is continuous and for all uh, the real line and also the values are uh, uh, inside uh, uh, the whole real line. In fact, pictorially, uh, you can make that one in this way. Here, when x equals 0, the value is 3. Okay, that is 3. And now, here, minus half x absolute value, so that graph is uh, given in this way. Okay, let's try to make expand the x-axis. Then that is a minus 6, and that is 6, right? That is a 0, and that is a y-axis, and that is x-axis. That's the graph of g of x, right? Okay, now we know that and uh, g is continuous and, and here and is r to r, so uh, no problem. The thing is, we have to show that this is contractible mapping. It's not differentiable. But we have to show it is contractive mapping. Okay, what is the definition of contractive mapping? Let's go back to the definition. And g of x minus g of y is bounded by some k, which is strictly less than 1, times x minus y. Okay, so which is two points, x and y, and start with uh, uh, g of x uh, minus g of y. Okay, g of x is a 3 minus half absolute value of x, and minus, and 3, and minus half y absolute value. So that is same as here, minus half, and 3 will disappear, and then, and that's same as here now, x minus y. Right? Okay, so we have that. Now, uh, so that if we take absolute uh, value, g of x and minus and g of y, then absolute value this one, is now bounded by here half is there and then rather than absolute value of x minus y absolute value we can put here x minus y for any choice of x y uh, it is satisfied so that this one is now less than one so g is a contractive mapping so uh, here, xn uh, should uh, converge and to the uh, fixed point, okay, and unique fixed point. Practically, if you are trying to find a fixed point, then y equal x is there, okay, and then that is the fixed point p, okay. That is unique uh, fixed point. Okay, that's the end of the section. Thank you.